Uh, my name is Suketu Mehta, and I'm going to read from uh, uh, a letter that Mahatma Gandhi wrote in 1920, which was addressed to every Englishman in India. And um, Gandhi was famous for uh, saying at one point, uh, he pointed out that there were at its peak only about 10,000 uh, Englishmen ruling a country of some 350 million people. And uh, he noted that if every Indian were to spit in, in unison, they would form a puddle large enough to drown every Englishman in India. <laughs> he did not say this in this letter. <laughs> Dear friend, I wish that every Englishman will see this appeal and give thoughtful attention to it. Let me introduce myself to you. In my humble opinion, no Indian has cooperated with the British government more than I have for an unbroken period of 29 years of public life in the face of circumstances that might well have turned any other man into a rebel. I ask you to believe me when I tell you that my cooperation was not based on the fear of the punishments provided by your laws or any other selfish motives. It was free and voluntary cooperation based on the belief that the sum total of the activity of the British government was for the benefit of India. I put my life in peril four times for the sake of the empire. I did all this in the full belief that acts such as mine must gain for my country an equal status in the empire. So as late as last December, I pleaded hard for a trustful cooperation. I fully believed that Mr. Lloyd George would redeem his promise to the Muslims and that the revelations of the official atrocities in Punjab would secure full reparation for the Punjabis. But the treachery of Mr. Lloyd George and its appreciation by you and the condonation of the Punjab atrocities have completely shattered my faith in the good intentions of the government and the nation which is supporting it. But through my faith in your good intentions, th but though my faith in your good intentions is gone, I recognize your bravery and I know that what you will not yield to justice and reason, you will gladly yield to bravery. See what this empire means to India exploitation of India's resources for the benefits of Great Britain, an ever-increasing military expenditure and a civil service the most expensive in the world, extravagant working of every department in utter disregard of India's poverty, disarmament and consequent emasculation of a whole nation, lest an armed nation might imperil the lives of a handful of you in our midst traffic in intoxicating liquors and drugs for the purpose of sustaining a top-heavy administration, progressively repressive legislation in order to suppress an ever-growing agitation seeking to give expression to a nation's agony, degrading treatment of Indians residing in your dominions, and you have shown total disregard of our feelings by glorifying the Punjab administration and flouting the Muslim sentiment. I know you would not mind if we could fight and wrest the scepter from your hands. You know that we are powerless to do that, for you have ensured our incapacity to fight in open and honorable battle. Bravery on the battlefield is thus impossible for us. Bravery of the soul still remains open to us. I know you will respond to that also. I am engaged in evoking that bravery. Non-cooperation means nothing less than training in self-sacrifice. Why should we cooperate with you when we know that by your administration of this great country, we are being daily enslaved in an increasing degree? People flock in their thousands to listen to me because we today represent the voice of a nation groaning under your iron heels. You are in search of a remedy to suppress this rising ebullience of national feeling. I venture to suggest to you that the only way to suppress it is to remove the causes. You have yet the power. You can repent of the wrongs done to Indians. You can compel Mr. Lord George to redeem his promises. I assure you he has kept many escape doors. You can compel the Viceroy to retire in favor of a better one. You can revise your ideas about 
General Dyer, you can compel the government to summon a conference of the recognized leaders of the people, duly elected by them, and representing all shades of opinion, so as to revise means for granting home rule in accordance with the wishes of people of India. But this you cannot do unless you consider every Indian to be in reality your equal and brother. I ask for no patronage. I merely point out to you, as a friend, an honorable solution of a grave problem. The other solution, namely the repression, is open to you. I prophesy that it will fail. Thank you.